Welcome to Metlacto. Today we are going to discuss different attachments of the carpal bonds. So let's start. First of all, if we see or if we quickly revise the carpal bones, basically there are eight carpal bones that, that are actually arranged in two rows, proximal rows and the distal row. So <clears throat> if you see here, the row that is actually near to the center of the body, that will be the proximal row. And after that, you will see the distal row. So here is the proximal row and here is the distal row. In each row, you will see the four bones. Okay. Now, if you see here, first of all, you will see the proximal row. Proximal row. In the proximal row, you will see the four bones. So we will see it from the lateral to the medial side. This is the one thing. First one is the scaphoid, second one is the lunate, third one is the triquitral and the fourth one will be the passiform. passiform. So these are basically the four bones that will actually lie in the proximal row. Next is the distal row. So if you see here like this is the distal row. In the distal row, you again see four bones that will be the, if you see here, first one is starting from the lateral side. This one is, first one is the trapezium, trapezoid and third one is the capitate and the fourth one will be the hemate. So these are basically the eight bones that actually uh, lie in the two rows, proximal and the distal. So now we will see the different attachments, different muscles and the different ligaments to the carpal bones. Actually carpal bones form a scare. So it actually form a scare if you see here this one. Okay. And you see the each attachment will be at the corners of the carpal bones. So if you see here, like this one is the, this is actually the scaphoid bone, lunate bone, and third one is the, if I say, triquitral and the passiform. This is the first row. And next is the, this is the second row, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hemate. So these are the bones. So at the corner, you will see the scaphoid. This is the first corner. Here is the second corner that is for the trapezium, this is for the hemate and this is for the passiform. Okay, so these are basically the four corners and you will see the different attachment will be at these four corners. So we will discuss it one by one. So first of all, if we discuss the first corner that is the scaphoid. So, so first one is, is, is the scaphoid bone. Scaphoid bone. So, you will remember the different muscles with the help of the F wave. Mnemonic will be the F wave. So, mnemonics will help you in remembering the different terms for a long period. So, if we make mnemonics, then we can easily remind the different attachment to the only scaphoid bone. That will be the F wave. F stands for, if you see, F stands for flexor retinaculum. This is the one thing. Second attachment will be the abductor. Okay, that will be the abductor pollicis brevis. Okay. So, what is flexor retinaculum? It is actually a connective tissue that is actually present at the palm sides of the wrist. This connective tissue actually uh, covers and forms the carpal tunnel through which the different muscles pass. So actually flexor reticulum act actually present at the palmar size and opposite will be the extensor reticulum that is actually present at the dorsal aspects of the hand. Okay, so it is actually flexor reticulum Attached with the scaphoid. Okay. Next is the abductor pollicis brevis. 
So you will remember when you break it into smaller pieces. So first one is the abductor as the name indicate that it will do the abduction. It's muscle, it's a muscle that will perform the abduction. Second one is the brief policies. Policies mean thumb. So actually it's a muscle that actually lie at the thumb side. So actually this is actually the thumb. Okay. And this is actually the little finger. Little finger. Okay. So at the thumb side you will see the presence of the scaphoid. So abduction. Policies mean thumb. Brevis means small. So actually it's a muscle that lie at the thumb side. This is the one thing. Perform the abduction and it is small in size. So that is the abductor policies brevis muscle that is actually present at the thumb side. This is the one thing. Hope so you got the point two attachment flexor retinaculum and abductor policies brevis. Next is the first proximal row second corner will be the passiform. So passiform Passiform. You will again remember it within the morning. That will be the E double F A. This is the second morning for the passiform. So first is the E. E stand for extensor extensor retinaculum. This is the one thing. Second is the flexor. Retinaculum. These are both connective tissues. One lie, extensor will lie at the dorsal aspects of the wrist. But the flexor will lie at the palmar aspects of the wrist. So these are basically the two connective tissues that will attach to the passiform. And third is the flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris muscle okay this is actually if you see flexor means it perform the flexor carpi means it will attach to the carpal bones that will be the passiform and third is the ulnaris so it has two attachment sides as every muscle has origin and insertion so it will attach to the ulna and also with the carpal bone that will be specifically the passiform bone so it will actually perform the flexor. So this is the another thing. But why do we call ulnaris? Because ulna is actually present at the side. Here is the ulna. Ulna will actually present at the side of the little finger. Opposite will be the radius. Radius will actually present at the side of the thumbs. Okay. This is the flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay. Next is the abductor. Abductor. DGT minimi. So if you do focus on the abductor means it will perform the abduction. Digit means finger. And minimi means small or you can say little. So it's a muscle that will perform the abduction and it will actually present at the side of the little finger. So this is another thing. Here is the little finger and here is the passiform. Passiform bone. And this muscle will attach to the passiform bone. Okay. Next is the distal row. And the corner will be the trapezium. Okay. That will be the trapezium. So you will again remember it within the morning. And that will be the L-O-F-A. In each time you will just increase the F. Single F, double and triple. So at the trapezium, you will see first of all L4 lateral ligament. So lateral ligament will attach to the trapezium because it's actually a lateral side. That's why we call the lateral ligament of wrist. Okay. Next, O for opponents. Opponents policies. Why do you call policies? Policies mean thumb. So actually it present again at the thumb side. This is the opponent's policies. 
Next is the F for flexor retinaculum. So that will again, uh, it has again third attachment side will be the trapezium. Here is the flexor retinaculum, here is the flexor retinaculum, flexor retinaculum. It will attach to the all four corners of the wrist. So, and next is the flexor policies brevis, flexor policies thumb, brevis means small. So, this is another muscle. And next is the flexor carpi radialis. So, this is another important point. It will, it will be the radialis. We discuss the ulnaris and the radialis because it will actually lie at the radius side. So, that's why we call it radialis. So, flexor carpi radialis, it has two attachment type sides, carpal bone and the radius that will actually present at the thumb side. So, and last one is the abductor, abductor policies brevis. So, it, it has two policies brevis, flexor and the abductor. So, these are basically the different attachment to the trapezium. But keep remember that the opponent's policies, flexor policies brevis and the abductor policies brevis. These four muscles form the thenar eminence. Eminence. Okay, if you see here, like this is actually the thumb side. At the thumb side, it will actually form three muscles. Actually, here, if you see here, these. At this side, you will see the three muscles from the thenar eminence. First one is the opponent's policies. Second is the flexor policies brevis. And third is the abductor policies brevis. So these are basically the four muscles that will form the thenar eminence. And last one is the hemate. Last one is the hemate bone. And you will remember it with the FO. For again, flexor retinaculum. Keep remember, flexor retinaculum will attach to the all four corners of the uh, wrist. Next is the flexor digiti minimi because it will actually present at the little finger. So the muscle that will attach to the hemate will be the flexor digiti minimi. And last is the opponent's digiti minimi again that is another muscle that will attach to the hemate. So these are basically the different attachments of the carpal bones. If you have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.